Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Good to see you here after um, the first, this first Sunday after Pascha. And uh, we had, a, I think, a glorious uh, Holy Week. Uh, a, a lot of people came, people we had not seen, I think, since, the pan since before the pandemic. And um, so it's very good. Thank thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for that. of life in his name. Then in his next chapter, he says this. This is the disciple who's testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. <laughs> Where do we begin with God? Jesus has left no writings for us. He built no buildings. The material evidence of Christ's existence on this earth are scarce. We begin by accepting the testimony of people who knew Jesus. They had an authentic, personal, empirical experience with Christ. They leave this earnest, loving witness for us. We're just a week from Pascha. During Holy Week, we heard the gospel narratives about Christ's passion and his resurrection. We have to remind ourselves that the disciples did not expect Jesus to rise from the dead. To say they were surprised is an understatement. They went to the tomb expecting to find a dead body, and they found an empty tomb and an angel who told them that Jesus had risen. The Apostle Paul writes about this, and actually his this, uh, his letter to the Corinthians actually predates the Gospels. The Apostle writes this in, to Christians in the city of Corinth who were confused about the resurrection. Who wouldn't be at first, right? For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, Peter, and then to the twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, the apostle. This is why we regularly read the Gospels and the Epistles. Were there other writings circulating in the centuries after Christ? Yes, lots of them. What happened to them? Most of them were just ignored because they didn't agree with the witness of the apostles. The church refers to this foundational apostolic testimony every single day. 
This is why we also rehearse these foundational truths of Christ and his saving acts for us when we celebrate the divine liturgy. By recollection, by anamnesis, we place ourselves in the time and space of these events, and this makes these actions in these words a present reality. It's through faith in this testimony that our knowledge of God begins and develops and it becomes our own knowledge and our own understanding and leads to our own faith in the risen Lord. Even in this secular age, the testimony of these men to the unique person of Jesus Christ continues to echo. We're confronted by the words of these people who saw the risen Lord. They went out and proclaimed the good news of the resurrection. They didn't profit from it. They didn't become wealthy or powerful. They didn't develop their own television shows. They gave their lives for preaching a challenging message that God was transitioning from Judaism to Christianity and that God was destroying paganism. Interestingly, as far as we know, the apostle and evangelist John, whose gospel we just read, was the only one of this band to die a natural death. Part two, more brief. A powerful example of faith. More than 270 years after these events, we come to the great martyr George, whose memory we honor today. Think about the time involved. 270 years. That's a long time. 270 years puts us back in 1753. We're still 13 colonies. Colonies. We weren't a country. Greece was still under the Ottomans. George was born in Cappadocia, son of wealthy and virtuous believing parents. His father was a martyr for Christ. After his death, George's mother moved to Palestine with her son. When George grew up, he entered the Roman military, where by the age of 20 he attained the rank of tribune, and as such he was in the service of the emperor. He was very successful. But when Diocletian began his great persecution of Christians, Diocletian, of course, the great reforming emperor who decided he was finally going to stamp out this Christian business, bring, the, bring the, the Roman Empire back to its pagan roots. George came before him and courageously confessed that he was a Christian. The emperor had him thrown into prison and subjected to horrific tortures, ghastly tortures. But through all of these sufferings, George continuously prayed to God and God healed him and saved him from death to the great astonishment of people. When he resurrected a dead man through his prayers, many accepted the Christian faith. Among these were Alexandra, the wife of the emperor. We just observed her feast two days ago. Finally, the emperor commanded that George and his own wife, Alexandra, be beheaded. Alexandra died on the scaffold before she could be beheaded, and St. George was beheaded in the year 303 AD. He was 28 years of age. Countless miracles have occurred at the grave of St. George. He's appeared in dreams and openly to those who from, time, from that time to today have invoked him and implored his help. Just like the apostles who saw Christ, though he did not see Christ, George had unshakable faith in Jesus. And for the sake of this love, he gave up everything. In return, the Lord gave George a crown of unfading glory and power to help those who call upon him for help. George has been the patron to millions of people throughout the centuries. And Kronjopala to all of our Georges and Georgianas today. Years ago, I was, um, I was in Boston visiting a monastery, and um, they had a little icon of St. George, and the, the icon of St. George was hundreds of years old, hundreds of years old, from before, before the, the, uh, the, the nation, the revolution, the Greek revolution. So sometime... Sometime in the 18th century, this, this icon was painted. And for, for a family in Asia Minor, not a lot of money, not a lot of, lot of wealth. I'm sure they, they, they had to scrape, scrape their funds together to buy this little icon, this little icon, hand-painted, beautiful icon, faded a little bit over time. And then someone in the family got sick. And they prayed to St. George for help. And sure enough, that person got better. 
And they promised St. George that if the person got better, they would give him a kalima, a silver uh, cover for this icon. Well, the person got better and they forgot about the kalima. And uh, after a while, one of the children came, began wandering back in the house and saying, Mama, there's a man and a horse out there. He's, he's asking about the icon. Well, man and a horse, a Turk, you know, don't talk to him. Don't talk to him. And then day after day, day after day, the child came back. They know the man's back. The man and the horse is back. He's up on the roof. <laughs> He's asking me about the kalima for his icon. And she thought, oh, of course, of course. <laughs> and today, of course, that little icon of St. George has is a beautiful silver color cover that uh, for some reason does not fade. St. George. Here is the question this morning. What kind of faith do we have? What kind of faith do you have? What kind of faith do I have? Do we have St. George faith for the apostles and then centuries later, centuries later for St. George, the entrance into this world of the, of the Son of God and his triumph over death changed everything. Christ's resurrection refocused and redefined everything. God is real. There is an afterlife. There's a judgment. There's a coming kingdom of God. Everything in this world and in this life takes not even second place to attaining to that kingdom. Nothing is as important as serving and pleasing the Lord Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. No one is as important as the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing. No one. Amen. Please stand.